This is a spinal cord model showing a few things from the skeletal system as well. First off, this is the vertebral body. Posterior to it is the spinal cord with roots and a spinal nerve traveling off either side. We can also see the spinous process, the transverse process, and the superior articulating facet of that vertebrae. But what we want to focus on is the nervous system structures. So let's go in order of where information would travel in to the spinal cord. And that occurs from way out here. This is the ventral rami, number 14, and the dorsal rami, number 15. Dorsal, coming from the back. Ventral, or coming from the anterior, the front. Now these two can lead into, right here, which is what's called the spinal nerve. This is the actual spinal nerve right here. But then notice there's a bump. The bump is called the dorsal root ganglion. Dorsal root ganglion. And as you travel back, you'll notice it splits. The dorsal root is this yellow part, and dorsal root will carry information towards the spinal cord. So this is an afferent direction traveling into the spinal cord. Now the spinal cord is like a tree trunk. It's got lots of different layers to it, but as soon as you get in, you'll notice there's a gray area and a white area. The gray area is composed of the dorsal or posterior horn, the lateral horn, and the ventral or anterior horn. You also have the central canal with the posterior median sulcus and the anterior median sulcus. After you leave the ventral horn, you travel out the ventral or anterior root. This is now carrying motor information, traveling out and can travel to the back the dorsal rami, or the front and sides, the ventral rami. But you can also travel out what's called a rami communicant to the sympathetic trunk. This here is a sympathetic ganglion, but the whole thing, which would stretch up and down the spinal cord, is a sympathetic trunk.